be hardwired to act in times of crisis. So take the, the recent earthquake in Japan. We had students that were just coming to us immediately, like, what can we do? And the students actually did something about it. But what tends to happen, and one of the things that we wanted to change here, is we wanted our students to be thinking about that all the time, not just when something major happens. So one of the things that we wanted to move into is moving away from this idea that service is just a momentary, one-time thing. And we really wanted our girls to start thinking about service as something that's transformative, a process, something that happens over time. And the best way that we were able to do this is through the creation of partnerships. Now, the reason why partnerships are so important is because you know, we might have one group of kids over here that may be really interested in dealing with homelessness. We may already have a connection with an organization that's doing something around homelessness. But by creating these partnerships, we can focus on one thing work with this one organization, and again, it's an efficient use of our students, it's an efficient use of our time, it's an efficient use of our resources. So here's this, and, and this idea came up when, the, when our group got together and we started talking about ways that we wanted to strengthen the program, and we began to look at those areas that all we already had a connection with. To highlight a few of these, one is the Earth Valley Children's Village, which is in Tanzania. We actually have some students there now with a teacher. Um, it's a school that boards children in Tanzania. They take all their education there, they live there. But the nice thing about this is that we're able to take a lot of different issues that we can address and focus it on one thing. So if students want to do a clothing drive, then we can do a clothing drive and then we can donate all those clothes to the, this, this children's village. They want to do a, a school supply drive, then instead of finding a source and hey, we know some kids that can actually use those supplies. So, it gives the service that they're doing a face. It makes it real. It makes it something that they feel connected to, the change that they can actually see. Another one that's a personal favorite of mine is our relationship with the Old Grove School for the Blind, which is right down the street. And for the past few years, we've been taking students down there in cohorts, allowing them to fellowship with the students. But the beautiful thing about this partnership is that it's not the sort of service where our girls just get off the bus and help out the poor blind kids at Old Grove. No. Very much, most of the time, it's those kids that are actually providing the service to our girls. Really redefining what it means to live in this world with a disability. Really defining what it means to get help. So I feel that that partnership has been remarkable. And all of these, in some way, shape, or form, provide that, that, that learning experience for everyone who's involved. So I'm going to talk really quickly and, um, about four new partnerships that I'm really excited about. First thing I want to talk about is Family Support Services, led by an alumna of um, Sean Lacey, whose daughter is a senior right now, who's the sole reason why this program still continues. So what SS does is that it works with families within the city of Philadelphia with children that, that have autism of sorts or some sort of mental disability on the autism spectrum. And in the past, what would happen is that FSS FSS would have these programs at night where they would teach parents all sorts of skills or introduce them to some amenities that they would have for their children. But the parents could never fully engage because oftentimes what would happen is they would be worried about their kids who were in the back of the room or enter ball. So what we decided to do was build a module where we would go down once a month and instead of the kids being in the room, we would take them to another site and we would just hang out with them for the hour. That way they, their parents can have full engagement in the program and we're hanging out in the back. There was once when we scheduled a date where the students couldn't make it because they all had finals. And it was nice because they just brought a bunch of faculty down with me and we babysat the kids. So it's a really good opportunity. The other thing that we did earlier this year is that we had a Christmas party for the kids. So we collected all these toys and gifts. We wrapped them. And the girls were excused from school. And I drove them down to the city. And we got to hang out with these kids. And we got to watch them all open their gifts that day. So, again, it's an opportunity for these girls to put a face with the service that they're actually doing. Believe it or not, oftentimes, you can't help but jump in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a better relationship with Bryn Mawr Thrift Shop, which is right up the street. They were influential in terms of helping us um, collect shoes um, and other clothing items for the children in Tanzania. Uh, they helped us out by giving us a bunch of shoes before the girls went over. But, in another, in another module we're going to talk about in a second with our ethics course that I teach, a lot of, and that group teaches, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll bring our girls in to introduce them to how nonprofits work, to introduce them to the work that they do with the hospital. So our girls are beginning to not only look at service as something to do, but a 
possible or rare if that's something that they're thinking about. And it kind of helps them to find, you know, that, that in order to run a service project, sometimes it does take business know-how. So they get to see this operation. And they get to see all aspects of it, too. Um, we recently forged a new relationship with the Salvation Army of Greater Philadelphia. Um, everybody pretty much knows what the Salvation Army does. They tend to work with families in transition or families who are the recent victims of disaster. Um, they helped us out this year with our MLK Day of Service. So what our students did was reach out to our trustees and let them know that we had this initiative and we wanted to collect pajamas for children who were displaced by fire or not for disaster. And they came through, so one day I took all the girls down to Target and let them do what they like to do, which is shop. <laughs> so they bought a bunch of pajamas there. And then the day of MLK, when the school was closed, we all came in. During the family gatherings, each family was able to make a gift basket, which is what you see right here. And then throughout the day, we basically just sort of put together pajama sets, we put together toiletry sets, and we built these, these gift baskets. Um, we also had a pillow making project, so we added a pillow to every set. And Kathy Gates, who's one of our lower school teachers, helped with that. So here you can see a couple of girls working the sewing machines that day. But at the end of the day, it was, a, it was an awesome opportunity for people to come together as a community. This is an example of our cross division service project. So don't think that service just happens within the division. There are often times where we can kind of work with one another. It also gives an opportunity for mentorship for our older girls to work with our younger girls there. And then another favorite of mine is Special Olympics. Special Olympics just started this year. We're working with students from Lower Marion and from around, around Montgomery County who come and meet with us on Saturday. Right now, our sport is basketball. We're actually going to our first tournament this weekend. Um, but, you know, all we do is we bring them in, we hang out for about an hour and a half, we, we, we play basketball, but look, it's organized chaos, as I like to call it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and you, get, you get all kinds of athletes, they're all highly functional, um, and I want to thank Deb Sergi because we finally look like a team now, so here we are with our jerseys right now. Um, that's my man, by the time we so my man right there in the front, Josh, he, he never made a basket in practice, and then he finally hits one. So he's running up to me, I think he's going to give me a high five, and he kisses me right on the cheek. <laughs> he won't let go. So, so we have to talk about the proper way to get back on defense. <laughs> all right, so that was the first goal. But the second goal is, so you have all these students, they do all these service projects, so what do you do now? Well, we want to empower these young women to know that now that you have the skills, go out and do it. You don't always have to wait for ball. So earlier I mentioned that the recent disaster in Japan, our students wanted to act. But that's the beauty of the module. They didn't wait for Baltimore and say, okay, well on this date we'll have a can drive. No, they actually came to us and said, well, we want to do this. So once they're able to sort of institute the things that they want to do to create change, then my role goes from being someone who sort of introduces a project to one who sort of helps administer a project. Um, to give a few examples, um, Carissa White, who's in the class of 2013, so a sophomore, she was the reason why we came up with this pillow making, making project for the MLK Service Day. And she actually went out on her own, made a connection at shop, and recently before our spring break, went down on her own, dropped off the pillows. And these are all the women and children who suffer from juvenile delinquency all the way down to juvenile, I mean, pediatric cancer. So, um, just one example. A couple of other examples that we have of students in the past, we heard about it. Nadia Tamim was a senior. I have to say, single handedly, sort of read refocus the school on looking at women globally, looking at the issues that they deal with, looking at some of the, the, the struggles that they deal with. Now she started out focusing specifically on Pakistan, but since then, I can't even count the number of countries that they discuss. And I think it was last year, she had this beautiful program that took place in our gym, a multi-purpose room, that brought up the whole community to learn about different cultures and really focusing in on women in these countries. So, Areas that probably never would have been discussed, that people would have never learned about, they learned from someone like her. This is a student doing that. I talked already about Special Olympics. That was started by a student, Stephanie Shepard. Last Friday, we had an open mic that raised money for the um, Global Lives Project, which is funding two young girls who are going to be able to go to school in Malawi. And then last year, we had a senior who reached out to a uh, shelter that deals with domestic violence, and we collected toiletries, and we brought them down there. And these women were just so thankful for the help that we were able, that we were able to provide to them. So 
just to give you a, a this is the last one, just to give you an idea about how this all connects. So, in a lower school, some of the things that you can expect girls to be doing. Um, they have a partnership with the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, they collected used eyeglasses and gave them to the Lions Club. Um, but the thing that stands out to me is that I would kind of look at lower school as being the introduction to service. So take jump rope for heart. These are ways that we just kind of get, the, get, our, get our youngest students thinking about them as a citizen. What are things that they can do? What are things that they can start to care about? So it's just the introduction. But as they move on to middle school, it becomes more complex. And this year, what they started doing is have each, they have each grade focus on a specific theme. So in the sixth grade, the focus was children's health. So there they made a connection also with CHOP. The little tabs that you get when you open a can of soda, well, they collect those. And with those cans, they, with those tabs, they donate them to the Ronald McDonald House. And based on a certain number that they collect each year, it pays for the entire year of electricity for the Ronald McDonald House. They've been doing that for years. Um, they've also built, they built their own cosmetic kits and snack kits that are given to families that are also in transition that have stayed at the Ronald McDonald House. Um, in the seventh grade, they too focus on global partnerships. Um, Pennies for Peace is a big program they do, that they do. Interwoven in their curriculum, they're all required to read three cups of tea um, as required reading before they come back to school. Um, so they're beginning to look at themselves as a global citizen, not just a domestic one. And then in eighth grade, they focus on women's health. So our dinner day, where everyone gets to learn about breast cancer and learn about, um, they, they, they've also, they have, they have a yoga day recently in the fall, they brought the whole community out and one of our teachers led the session in that. In the spring, we'll be doing the same thing. The bigger program that happens on the museum steps will be a part of that too. And then finally, the upper school. Um, I mentioned that in our ninth grade, our students will all take an ethics course. And in our ethics course, we sort of talk about what it means to be, to be a change agent, what it means to give back to your community. We also uh, talk about nonprofits and how those work. Service League is an organization that students are elected onto. They pretty much drive the service movement within the upper school. Uh, Bring on tutoring is a program that our students are involved in where twice a week they go over to the church, right over here, um, and up to, to the young kids from the city. And the nice thing about that is that if a student were to join that program in the 10th grade, they stay with the same student all three years, so they kind of get to see the group that student is speaking, and so they can also see growth within them, which is a nice thing. And then uh, service day, this is just one hour where we got, we, we met this random guy in the middle, if you recognize him. It's a man that we can't see. So, in a nutshell, you know, we're thinking girls, like, I would probably.